Katie and Matt and me have come to town to see if we can get some supplies to start on the greenhouse and hopefully construct one of the beds, one of the raised garden beds from the tin, the metal that we saved from our roof. Yep. Let's you do it. I'm you ready. Re let's, let's go. You ready? Yeah. First thing we're going to look for is some fabric or landscape barrier weed barrier, I guess you call it, to put down underneath whatever map, the rocks, the gravel that he's gonna put in the greenhouse. So he's trying to figure up the measurements to see how much we need. That'll work. Just one of them? Yeah. Okay. First thing marked off the list. Now we're gonna find the buggies, see if we can find some gravel. Won't get hung up in your shoes. Yeah, that's true. Especially when you wear boots in there, the little pieces will stick in the bottom. But it's gonna take a bunch of bags. Whatever you think. You're the boss in this endeavor. All right. Get in the we just need a buggy. If I'd have known, I'd have got you one. I'll go hunt one. Okay. <laughs> Katie got uh, hijacked in the store and talking to somebody, Matt said, and I said, oh, it was somebody, maybe a friend or somebody recognized her from YouTube, but Matt said, or Katie said, no, it's just someone that wanted to ask her if she was having a boy. They could tell by how she's carrying the baby. Which is sweet. Yeah, and then they said, you look great. I said, oh, thanks, I'm surviving. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying, Katie, trying hard. Katie has done so good though. We're so pleased and thankful. I have been very blessed to have a safe and healthy pregnancy, so thank the Lord for that. Matt's looking for an attachment that would help him cut the metal, make it easier, since he's gonna have to do a lot of cutting on it. He's got shears, but it'd be much easier to do it with something that do all the work. Yeah. Packed ready. It'll work on the impact driver or a regular drill. 18 to 24 gauge. I don't know exactly how thick that tin is. But, it surely wouldn't be no I mean, you can cut it with regular hand shears so this all to do it. So think that'll work. We're gonna try to make it work. I think you can make it work. I do. You know I don't think it's no thicker than eighteen. Because if you're I mean I know steel is different than but gauge size is the same for everything and if you can cut it by hand with shears then that's gonna do it. And I would be hard pressed to believe it would be any thicker than eighteen. That seems unnecessary. Found some nails or screws. Now we're looking at ratchet straps. Is this for this project or for something else? Uh, is that a trick question? <laughs> no. It's, uh, no, it's for something else. Fourteen foot long. Well, we finally got everything we need, we think. Maybe. Maybe. Matt's getting his straps out so he can strap everything down. We were looking for cedar two by fours. They didn't have any. And all the cedar they had, either it just wouldn't work, the stuff that they did have. 
So we ended up with pine, not our first choice, but we didn't want pressure treated. But Matt and I have used things out of the woods for so long, we're kind of used to it not lasting but a few years. So yeah, it'll last three or four years and fix it off to tear it down and fix it. Right. Let's see, I'm gonna need Yeah, he's gonna have to figure out how to make it all fit. Well, we made it back home, got some dinner. Now we're out here ready to unload. I'm not sure today we've got some other stuff we've got to do if we'll actually do any work, but at least we've got all the stuff here. We're not gonna work? Well, I gotta work some inside. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, you can work. Well, I thought that's what I thought we was gonna do this, finish the greenhouse part today, but I, whatever you wanna do. <clears throat> you the CEO. Okay. Got to ship some cookbooks and do some other things. So I'm not sure if we'll have time. We well, can save it and do it in the morning. Yeah. So hopefully we got everything we needed. Matt said we may need more rock. Um, and a lot of people may be wondering why didn't we just order some hauled here? Well, uh, we checked into that. We have a friend who brings us. All, you know, hauls all our stuff like that, thinking of the mulch and compost and stuff. But by the time you pay a haul bill, it just gets really expensive. And then too, and whatever of it you don't use. Then you got, yeah, then you got it. In so, way. Right. Anyway, so that's why we went with the bags. We hope this is enough. Matt thinks we may, may have to make another trip. But we, we brought home all his truck would hold. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty squatted. But if it's not enough, I'll go get some more. And we went with a bigger rock instead of the little small, uh, what do you call that, pea gravel. Mm -hmm. So that pea gravel gets stuck in the bottom of your boots if you wire it. And I just think this will hold up better. Matt thought it would hold up better, so I think it will. And what else did we end up? Are we able to get the shear thing to go on Matt's drill? So hopefully that will make cutting the tin easier. Yep. And then the, the wood, we wanted cedar. We didn't want pressure treated, um, even though they say today that pressure treated is, you know, not got the poisons in it. Maybe it had before. We like to use more natural things. So we wanted cedar because that last cedar is so expensive, but even, they didn't have it anyway. And I guess we could have waited and looked or maybe searched or tried to order it or something like that. But instead, Matt just got the pine and we'll use it. It won't last as long as the cedar. Certainly not as long as something that was pressure treated. But it'll last what we've done in the past out here, it'll last probably four or five years and if it mm -hmm. rots, the way I'm gonna build it, it's gonna be on the outside of the actual box of the bed I'm building and if it, when it rots I'll just take it off and replace it. Uh, it's not that big a deal. I mean I'd rather do that is to use you know, treated wood and don't know for sure what's in it and don't want it around my food. I'd rather the stuff last a few years and rot and have to be replaced just to wonder about 
<laughs> what are we eating, yeah. you know? And we've kind of lived our whole garden and life like that as far as these raised beds. Um, now, not the ones that we bought last year on the bank. Those are great. And we won't have to worry about redoing them, but the ones back here in the back, Matt would just cut trees off of the ridge up here, roll them down here, cut them to the lengths he wanted, and then put them together, and, mm -hmm. and they rot away. You know, like Matt said, they would last probably, what, six, seven years, something like that. Yeah, them right there in that big bed, the first one we're going to replace is probably 10 years old. But now they're about rotted away. Yeah, they're almost completely gone. But we've gone. always, we've been able to use that garden or that little piece of garden year after year with no problem and uh, you know the dirt stayed in place. I think that may be the second ones and it's so hard to remember <clears throat> if your memory's like mine hard to remember what you've done and what you the which ones were first and all that. Um, one of the last videos Matt and I talked about I was talking about them and I was trying to think about was that is that the second set of logs and um, and we have this bed down here it's got logs on it and these two and this one and I was I kind of forgot about that, but I was hunting for a, a photo to use for my a blog post I was writing, and I come across a photo of back here. I totally forgot about this, and I bet Matt has too, but he'll remember when I tell him. The very first beds that we made were kind of right here behind the camera, and they had they were boards. They weren't logs. I had totally forgot that, so I don't know what kind of boards we used or if it's just some we had laying around. I totally forgot that. Yeah, and they probably rotted away. Pro quickly, and yeah. And then, you know, it, it, it got time to fix them, and this is what we came up with. We just either cut off the side of the mountain here or some that had already failed, and I just sawed them to length and drug them into the yard, and we just put that together, and it's worked. it works fine. Oh, yeah. It's just not as appealing to the eye or as long-lasting as, you know, something like cedar or... Uh, even oak would last mm -hmm. longer, but it's just according to how much money you want to spend on something like that. And then where we live is the availability is the problem. Yeah. And I'm just, we're not ones that's going to drive, you know, 75 or 100 miles to get something when we can make something do make that we've do. already got. Yeah. And as far as the logs, they work great, and I love how they look, but that is so labor intensive on Matt. Yeah, I don't want to do that no more. <laughs> because of where we, because of our goat bluff here, you're getting them from the ridge, you've got to get them down here. It's just, it's just a, a hard, they're heavy anyway, even if you're on flat ground, they're heavy. But uh, anyway, that's so labor intensive, and Matt's, Matt says he's retired from those days. <laughs> yeah, I'm too old for uh, that. So anyway. Um, the great thing though, if you are somebody that would like raised beds, I would encourage you, and you can't do none of that, none of the things we talked about, just put a piece of cardboard down and pile some dirt on top of it. And it works. Uh, and it works, and it helps, and you don't, if you're not able to till the ground or maybe your ground's too poor, and the, our Tommy Toe bed here, it doesn't have anything, the, the logs have rotted away from it. And they've been totally gone from it for probably two years mm -hmm. and we're still just growing in that that mound of dirt mm -hmm. on top of the ground it works fine. right so you know like matt said if you're worrying about how things look you want it to look nicer to be enclosed and, and you know it does help keep your dirt all you know don't uh, fall out into the yard or something like that it makes it more compact and easy but if you can't do that, you can still still grow just right on top of the ground. Right. Right. I guess you're ready to unload. I guess this breeze is cool. I need to get. I know. Busy. I'm I'm getting shivery here. I'm starting to shiver. Okay. I guess we'll get this load of stuff in. Are we gonna put it in the greenhouse or we're we gonna put it out no, here? No, I ain't putting. I ain't. I wasn't even gonna unload the rock until it's until ready, we're to, ready to, to go. Be put in. Okay, so you're just doing the wood. Yeah, I'm gonna get okay. the wood out and all that stuff, but I'm just gonna get it off the truck as I need it once it's ready to be put down. Okay, sounds good. Okay. We're still admiring the greenhouse, how we got it cleaned out. We could have cleaned it out last fall and we could have admired it all winter. <laughs> but that didn't happen. We didn't manage to get that done. Well, what we manage to do every year is, after its summer use is over with, it ends up being a place to pack stuff yeah. and store stuff. 
and then it just becomes a junk pile. Yeah, you don't know what to do with it, put it in the greenhouse. Yeah. That's a good place for it. Can't see it in there, and it's out of sight and out of mind. Yeah, and then we don't worry about it again until the next year. So Yeah, and then when we want to use the greenhouse, we got to unload it every clean time. It. We did get some, uh, Oops. that's okay, uh, landscape stuff to put down first underneath the rock. So hopefully that'll help with some of the weeds. Matt won't be in here weed eating this year. Yeah, I hate that. And then Matt found these. Uh, he's, Matt, is, me and Matt are different. We're alike in so many ways, but we're different too in some ways. And like one way, if I have a project, I want to like plan every little detail of how you do it. I want to have like directions and follow them. I can keep going back to my directions. Matt's totally not like that. He likes to go by the seat of his pants and he just, he knows he'll figure it out as he goes. So he don't have a, like it's not like the for the raised beds, uh, it's not that complicated for one. But for another thing, it's not like he has this drawn out system that he's gonna do. He's just gonna he thinks he knows what he's gonna do, and then he'll adjust as he goes. Right. Yeah. And I'm not capable of doing that. If if it starts going south with me, I just want to quit. And Matt's like, no, you just gotta figure it out. Just you gotta be um, bob and weave. Is that what you say? Things rarely go in the world as they do on paper, and I learned that a long time ago, so I don't fuss and worry with that. I buy the stuff or whatever that I'm pretty sure I can make work, and I may have to change in the middle of it, but I can usually make something work, and that's the way I do it. Mm -hmm. He's very good at it, uh, too. may not be exactly the most efficient way, but it's my way, and that's the way I do it. Right. Yeah. It's the only way I can. That's the only way I can function. <laughs> and it works. So if it works, yeah. it it works. Right. Anyway, he got these small little T post. Uh, and I don't think we showed that. I don't think we showed that on our little <clears throat> trip. So I didn't even know they made such a thing. Yeah. yeah I'm just gonna drive these in the ground around that bed, and I'll figure out how much I'm gonna leave stuck up. You know, as I go. And the wood I bought is actually going to be, you know, kind of a frame that I'm going to attach the metal to, the metal roofing that we're reusing. Uh, and I'm going to screw through the through the holes in these posts. I don't know if you can see those or not, but they're little screw holes. Uh, screw through the wood and through the tin, or through this into the wood in the tin. You know, just to hold it in a in a rectangular shape and do that all the way around and then I'll go back and put these wherever I think they need it where there's kind of a you know a weak place or a place where it's bulged out because of the dirt and just drive another one of these in and that's how it's going to be held together and at the ends uh, the the ends of the metal I'll leave a little bit of the wood stuck over and literally screw it wood to wood also and I know it's kind of hard to understand at this point but when we get started doing it I'll show it a little bit closer gives it some stability yeah, I, mean, I guess it's pretty simple but it, it will it should work well and using the reclaimed uh, metal roofing uh, is a good thing because we've got so much of it i mean we've got an entire house worth mm -hmm. so we should be able to do several of these beds this way uh, this one being the one i'm going to practice on learn how i'm going to do it and then i'm going to try to we should have enough metal to do all our beds mm -hmm. it so, should be nice yeah and then that way you know the metal will last forever uh, what woods on it may have to be changed every few years but that's fairly simple and not a big deal so uh, that's the route we're going to go mm -hmm. it'll be nice yeah I guess with our if we use these if these uh, if you end up using them or ever how much shows on them so what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say and then the red it's like we're going to have Christmas tree <laughs> we're going to have Christmas <laughs> yeah. raised beds Again, you could paint them all if you wanted to, but we're not going to do that. Yeah. We're just going to leave them uh, like they are. If it'll hold dirt and it'll grow tomatoes, that's good enough for mm -hmm. me. Yeah, that'll be good enough for us. It is exciting yeah. to think we might be able to add a little bit more dirt, at least more. We always put compost, um, another layer of compost. But what happens, of course, if you just got this much and that's at the very top of your, like for our logs, for instance, well, eventually then your dirt gets above your, above your logs. So... Mm -hmm. So we'll have a little bit more more room this year to add our compost. And this way, it'll uh, it'll forever more be contained, you know. And there there won't be any really any reason to add more until it, you know, it kind of over time it will go down. It will get I don't know if the bugs or what in the growing in it, whatever mm -hmm. it 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 kind of shrinks in height 
and at that point we can add some more but this way you won't be adding so much it's overflowing right. the top yeah which is what's what happens to us sometimes mm -hmm. yeah when we're thinking about the uh, beds out there like i was saying you could you know if you can use the logs if you can buy the metal ones if you can make your own there's so many different ways but if you can't you could just use cardboard put cardboard down over your grass and then put you know a bag of dirt maybe two bags of dirt and grow in that but um, I've told this story before, but I'm always makes me smile. And gardening always makes me think of, of Daddy, of Pap. Uh, of course, I think about him a lot. But this time of the year, because he just taught, I mean, everything I know about gardening, I learned from him. And um, I remember after me and Matt had really got into the gardening stuff, and I was reading magazines. I, I don't remember really uh, looking on YouTube, but I'm sure I was reading blogs and things like that. And I got all enamored with raised beds, you know. And I remember one day I called Daddy and was telling him about it. And I was just all excited. I'd call him and tell him everything and ask questions, you know. And he kind of, you, you just see his face, can't you, Matt? Yeah. got this little smirk. I could just, I was on the phone, but I knew exactly what he's looking and chuckled mm -hmm. and said, Why, Tipper, people's been doing that since I was a boy and before that. Mm -hmm. He said, that's just patch farming. He said, everybody had, every woman when I was a boy had a little patch of this or that outside her back door yeah. that was her kitchen door that was separate from her um, her big garden. But mm -hmm. anyway, it, it makes me smile though because I was like, I had you know stumbled, stumbled onto on you know, <laughs> this newfangled yeah. ideal and and uh, he took great delight in teasing me about that. Of course, he liked our raised beds and all that. He, he thought did. those were great. But um, it was just that I was presenting it to him like it was a brand new, brand new thing. Yeah. But thinking about the days when Pap was a boy in gardens and then all the way till now to the way me and Matt do it, there is so many and me like on the reading the magazines or reading blogs or whatever. And now today you can go on YouTube. There are so many different ways of gardening. Um, so many different ways, and I don't think any of them's wrong. You just got to find the way that you do it. Whatever you just got to find what works for you. You know, we come from me and Matt both grew up in families who tilled, and we still do that. We till, but there's a great, you know, a huge um, what, a group of people that believe you shouldn't till. That's okay. That's great. That works for them. The tilling works for us. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, like the raised beds, like I was saying, if you want to go wood, if you want to go metal, if you want to buy them prefab, if you want to make them out of pallets and stuff, I've seen people, so many different ways. Um, amazing how much you can grow in containers. Me and Matt have been, especially me, have been just enamored, become almost obsessed with those grow bags because they're so easy to fool with because they're just fabric and then you can fill them up with dirt and it's amazing what you can grow in them. We've grew what how many pounds of potatoes last year do you think uh, we grew, grew a bunch but the majority of our potatoes was in those grow bags mm -hmm. and they just do so well the only the only uh, drawback to them is they dry out quicker than anything else and you have to stay on top of that and mm -hmm. be sure that you know whatever it is you're growing in them however much water they need you have to pay more attention to that because they they're black and they, they absorb mm -hmm. they hold heat and they just they your dirt will dry out before you realize it so uh, but as even, long as you keep it watered, they, they're yeah. fantastic. But even that, uh, really, again, depends on where you're at and how you like to do stuff. Like yeah. us, with here being on the north side, the great big ones that we use, they don't really ever dry out. I mean, we water them when we planted tomatoes in them. We water them, you know, to get them established. Mm -hmm. But then, because we get ample rainfall, usually, we don't have to worry about them. Now, the smaller they are, of course, they're going to they're gonna really dry out faster. And then, if, you, if you, we lived um, in a place where we got all day long sunshine i'm sure they, those big ones would totally dry out on us too but we necessarily don't have to worry about that as much but that's a big complaint you hear from people about them but there's just so many different ways to look at gardening and um, i think all of them like i said are right you just have to if you're a gardener you just have to figure out what works best for you so for me and matt we do these little raised beds that we have up here behind the house. We've done them for years. And now we have, last year, you know, we were able to add those on the bank. But then we still have the big, more traditional, I guess you would call it, garden. Mm -hmm. And then this year, we're so excited, we're going to have Pap's old garden. Mm -hmm. So that'll really be more of the, um, like the one that me and Matt helped Pap all those years. The one I grew up working in and learning this and that from Pap and Granny. 
So we're uh, going to be worked to death. Yeah, I think we'll, we're more of a mixture uh, when you think about the the no-till or the old-fashioned kind. I guess mm -hmm. we kind of do a little bit of both, yeah. but mostly the tilled. Um, and again, that's just that's just personal. You got to figure that out for yourself. Figure out what works for you. And I always say the amazing thing about growing things is seeds and plants, they really want to grow. That's mm -hmm. their purpose. So uh, a lot of people have told me, well, it's just I don't know where to start. I don't know how to do it. It's not as hard. It's not like um, a scientific, like a, I think, think chemistry or calculus or something like that. It's not because that plant and that seed really wants to grow with just minimal effort. You can, you can get it to grow, and it's so rewarding. And even if you do it on really small scale, right? Even if you don't, you don't have to do like Matt said. We, we're just taking on more and more and more. You don't have to do that. Um, even if you just have your little container and put some lettuce in it, it's such a joy, right. such a joy, <clears throat> and not that hard to do. You can you can do it if you're if you're one of the people on the fence worrying about it. That's all mighty good come harvest time. Yeah, that's Matt's Matt's favorite is the you know during the during, eating and the right, during, putting up. During the times when things begin to come in and different things are coming in at different times, but there's a point in the garden where almost all of it's ready at the same time, and in those meals that you can get fresh like that can't be mm, beat. That'd be so good. And for the past several years, we've enjoyed those meals, like thinking of our tomatoes, fried, fried squash, mm -hmm. some cucumbers, um, okri. okri. <laughs> But we've had to buy our corn. Thankfully, we've got a friend down the road. We can usually buy it from him. But this year, hopefully, Matt, I'll say, Matt, go to the garden and get mm -hmm. me some corn. Well, we've got to get it grown first. Go get me some <laughs> rosin ears for supper, Matt. That'll be nice. Yeah, we, used, really nice. we did that for years and years and years, and it's been whatever it's been eight, nine, ten years since we've done it. It'll be a, it'll be a treat. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming along with us as we bought the stuff we need to get started on our projects for this gardening season. We're always glad when you stop by to help us celebrate Appalachia.